Let's go through each of the tools in the program. I got Mastercam opened. For my first tool, I'm using a CNMG 432 insert to face the front of the part and turn the OD just on the front portion of the part. I'm only running aluminum, but these inserts seemed like they held up great and were constantly breaking a good chip. And I really didn't have to change them at all during the show. For this tool, I'm running it at 800 SFM with a feed rate of 10 thousandths per revolution. And I'm leaving 10 thousandths on all surfaces for the finish tool later on. After we square up the part, I have a drill going in, which is a 3 times D KSEM drill. This is an inch and an eighth diameter drill. And really, all this drill is doing is giving me a pilot hole for the next drill. I did run it a little bit bigger so it would rough out some of the material that doesn't need to be there. All this drill is doing is going into the front portion of the part, just giving me a nice surface for the longer 10 times drill that's coming in next. After that, I have another KSEM drill going in, which is a 10 times D 5 8 drill. I'm running this tool at 320 SFM with a feed rate of 20 inches per minute. After we have our drilled holes, the next tool I bring in is a 3 8 boring bar to rough out the ID and that's using the bottom turret of the machine. I'm using a 15 thousandths radius on the tool, and the insert I'm using is a KC5010 insert from Kenna Metal, and that's one of their main aluminum grades. I'm running it at 800 SFM with a feed rate of 6 thousandths per revolution and a depth of cut of 30 thousandths. So again, for the next tool, we have a boring bar. This time, it's got a sharper insert. I'm using an 8 thou radius insert to finish. The grade for it's slightly different, it's a KC5410, but once again it's another aluminum grade that Kenna Metal has. And really it's just a standard finish pass, one pass going across the ID. I'm running it at 1500 RPM with a feed rate of three and a half thousandths per revolution. Honestly for the bore for this one, and I mentioned it at the show, but to improve it I could have put a half inch bar in there and it would have ran even better. It's always best to use the biggest size bar that you can fit inside of the ID. But in this case, I already had the 3 8 bar. I didn't want to ask for another one, so that's the one I used. After that, we have the ID Groove. And for this one, I'm using one of Kenna Metal's K-Bars, which is a top-notch ID Groover. The bar that I'm using is a half-inch diameter grooving bar, but the width of the insert where it's doing the grooving is 47 thousandths wide. The width of the ID Groove in the part is 175 thousandths wide. So it's more than enough to be able to fit inside of this ID groove. I'm running it at 1500 SFM with a feed rate of three and a half thousandths per revolution. But then when I get to the finish, I slow it down to 1200 RPM with a feed rate of two thousandths per revolution. After that, our ID work is done, so we're gonna finish the OD. I have another CNMG insert coming in, and this time it's a CNMG 431 with a smaller radius. This tool I'm running at 800 SFM with a feed rate of 3 thousandths per revolution. And same deal as the roughing tool, it's just gonna face it and then turn one pass across the OD. And once again, I'm using the KCU 10B insert from Kenna Metal to do the finishing pass. After that tool, we're ready to do the chuck transfer. So the turrets get into position, the spindle starts sinking up, and then the part gets grabbed by the second spindle and moves across to the other side. Recently we had our Mubastic show where we opened our doors to everyone and showcased our shop and the machines in it for everyone to see. Every machine in our shop was running all kinds of parts from different industries and people came from all over the country and even outside of the US to see it. It was really amazing to meet so many people and hear their stories about how they got started and what they're working on and how our channel and academy helped them out. We're already working on doing it again next year and it's going to be even bigger and crazier. You can sign up using this link to reserve your spot. You're not going to want to miss it. So for the show, I was running a part on the SMX2100 using the Halter Universal Robot. It was a very similar setup to Travis who was also running his machine with the Halter Turn Stacker. And we actually have a video on that so check it out if you haven't seen it. So the part I was working on was based off an old aluminum quick disconnect we used to do for an aerospace company. I actually redrew the whole part from scratch in SolidWorks. I redesigned it, changed up as many features as I could, made things bigger and removed a few things. 
but for the most part, it's pretty close to what we actually ran. It's got a port fitting with a face groove on the front, a big hex around the OD, and then on the back, it's got a few different ID bores with an ID groove inside. Similar deal on the second side. I used the same roughing tool I used on OP1, so that's CNMG 432. I flipped the direction to use on the second spindle. I do a few more rough passes on this side just to get rid of some extra material that's on the part. And then I start turning the OD. There's a lot more OD work being cut on the second side than there was on the first side, so it's doing a little bit more work. The speeds and feeds are very similar. The only difference is on the second side, I drop the feed rate down from 10 thousandths to 8 thousandths per revolution, but I keep the SFM the same at 800 SFM. After that, we have an OD groove that we're going to be doing with the bottom turret. I have a 202 thousandths Beyond Evolution OD grooving holder and insert, and we're just putting in this OD groove in the middle of the part. For the SFM, I'm roughing it out with a speed of 1,000 SFM with a feed rate of 3 thousandths to rough it, and then I slow it down to 1,000 RPM with a feed rate of 2 thousandths to finish. Afterwards, I have a groover on the bottom turret, and this is going to put in the face groove on the front of the part. This is one of Kenna Metal's A4 face groovers, and the groove tool is 84 thousandths wide. This is really only doing one pass. I let it do a small roughing pass just to kind of queer up the very front of the part, but it really just plunges right in, puts the diameter in there, comes out, and then comes in one more time at the top. For this tool, I'm running it at 2,000 RPM with a finish rate of 2 thousandths per revolution. The next tool we got is a shell mill that puts the hex around the part. This is using one of Kenna Metal's Mill 411 shell mills, and it worked really well. For this tool, I did two facing passes, one for roughing, one for finishing. The roughing pass has two passes, the finishing pass is just one pass, and it goes straight across the hex. After I have those two passes, I transform it around the part to do the entire hex. For the spindle speed, I have it at 3,650 SFM, and this is a 2-inch shell mill, so this turns out to be about 7,000 RPM. For the feed rate, I'm running it at 3,003 tenths per tooth, which puts it at about 70 inches per minute. For the finish pass, I drop things slightly again. We're doing an SFM of 3,000, which puts it at about 5,700 RPM. And then the finished feed per tooth is 2 thousandths, which puts it at about 35 inches per minute. After that, we're going to finish the rest of the OD. This is the same CNMG 431 I used on OP1. We flip it around to work on the second side, just like the roughing tool. And for this tool, I'm running it at 800 SFM with a feed rate of 3 thousandths per revolution. So after that, I have a half inch boring bar on the upper spindle. And this is just going to do an edge break on the very front of the part. I've already finished that ID using the drill, so that drill is drilling to size. All I'm doing is putting a chamfer on the front of the part, so it really just takes a second on there. After that, the bottom turret's going to run a thread, which I have one of Kenna Metal's threading inserts for. And this is a 12-pitch thread. So I'm running it at 1,000 RPM, and I'm using the feed rate for that thread pitch. So it's going to be 83 thousandths per revolution. It's an inch and a quarter by 12 thread, and we're doing 14 cuts for it. After the threading insert, I actually bring back the OD groover from before, and this is going to put a thread relief into the part. I ran it before, but I wanted to wait until I did the threads before I put in the thread relief, just to make sure I had a nice blend from the end of the thread to the thread relief. So this tool is the same 202 thousandths wide groover as before. I'm running it at 1000 SFM to rough, and then I finish at 1000 RPM. Feed rate of 3 thousandths for the roughing, feed rate of 2 thousandths for the finishing. And then afterwards, I rerun the finish OD tool. This is just to deburr the top of the threads. So it's actually running backwards, starts at the end of the thread, comes forward, and this is just to make sure I don't leave any burrs on those threads. After that, the part is complete. The robot comes in, loads in a fresh piece, and then grabs the finished piece, gets it out of the machine, and puts it into the tray. So I thought this part would be perfect for the show because it was running out of aluminum, and I could cut up as many pieces as I wanted to 
to fill up both sides of the tray. So each side on the plate that I have in here, we have 34 pieces. So, and the robot actually ran really well. I didn't have to touch anything. I just let it run for both days, chatted with everyone that was coming by. The only thing I really had to do was clear out this error because every time somebody would trip the uh, light curtain, I'd have to uh, reset that so the robot knew to keep going. But I actually wanted that to happen because there were a lot of people in the show just kind of chilling over here, just watching from afar, but I wanted them to come get a good look at it. I told them it's fine, I'll just reset it and go about our day. Today I'm not going to go into programming the robot because we actually have a really good video showing off the control here and how easy it was. So the only thing I changed was I dropped the chuck pressure here for that second gripper. And that was so I made sure that I didn't damage the threads. If it was a job I was really worried about it though, I could swap out these grippers. I could make my own plastic ones and it would be perfect. For Bombastic, I was running this part with coolant and using the high pressure coolant to blast off any chips on the part. But for this video, I'm going to be turning off the coolant on most of the tools. So there might be a little bit of chip buildup that wouldn't normally happen. Now one thing in Mastercam I kind of wanted to touch on, when you have a cycle like this with the robot and you want to make sure everything's constantly running, you have to make sure that all of your travels and all of your park positions for your turret and the spindle are all perfect because you need to be able to let this machine run with you being able to walk away from it. This is something you have to watch out for in general with a multi-turret machine because you want to make sure that both turrets aren't going to crash into each other. And that's why in Mastercam, we use park commands to get tools out of the way, or we use wait commands to hold that tool in place while another tool is working. It's also something you have to watch out for with the robot to make sure that everything is out of the way when the robot is coming in to move. So that's everything for the quick disconnect. It was a fun job to run, having the robot with a full tray of parts on both sides, just constant production. I could let the robot run while I chat with people and go to the other side of the shop to check out the Mubastic show. So that was really cool. So thank you very much for watching our channel. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel if you haven't. I'm actually really excited to break down off of this job and go to our next project because I got this brand new tool in that I really want to do some test cuts on. So make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss this or really any of our videos. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.